Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. So let's talk about the changes that went into effect in Arizona August 1st. You've seen them, you've heard of, you heard some rumors. What's changed? Well, for you, the consumer, not much. But the misinformation is rampant. So there's a lot of assumptions that there's some new laws out there that quite honestly just aren't true. I'll give you an example. Sellers. You don't have to offer compensation to a buyer's agent. That's not new. That's always been there. But now some buyers feel like, well, I have to pay the agent commission every time. I can't afford that. I can't do it. It's also not true. So I want to go through and look at some of the forms, some of the rules here laid out to us by the National Association of Realtors. And I don't want to get into a debate about, well, I think agents are paid too much. They should be paid by percentage or by fixed fee instead of percentage and I believe that the industry is going to kind of morph into something different over time it was headed that way anyway um, whether or not you agree or disagree with this NAR ruling um, I think it's uh, it's just weird and it's causing chaos in the market right now it's causing people to drop back and some of the forms that are out there some agents have not taken the time to learn which ones to turn in and when and it's causing chaos with inside the industry turning in offers to sellers and why'd they send me this form doesn't make sense putting the offer of compensation that they're asking for in two different spots and it actually ends up meaning that they're going to get paid double so you got to send an addendum so it is a paperwork mess so now it's clear as mud let me see if i can clear this up for you here we start here and say from the national association of realtors Offers of compensation will be prohibited from the MLS. I get it. We can't put the offer in the MLS anymore. It's gone. Poof. We can make a phone call. Offers of compensation will continue to be an option for cons that consumers can pursue off MLS through negotiation and continue in consultation with real estate professionals. In other words, you can still do it. You can still offer compensation. Offers of compensation help make home ownership and the benefits of professional representation more accessible to buyers, especially first-time home buyers, increase home ownership opportunities for historically undeserved groups, underserved groups, not undeserved, jeez, and benefit sellers by expanding the potential buyer pool by ensuring they receive the best offer for their property. So what's that mean? It means if you are offering compensation, to pay the buyer's agent. It's not rocket science that your home will be seen by more buyers because there's going to be a percentage of buyers, a large percentage of buyers that said, I can't afford that upfront money. So only show me houses where sellers are offering compensation. Or I guess the buyer will just say, well, I'm just gonna go work directly with the listing agent unrepresented and I'll uh, take my chances that everything will, will go well. But if you offer buyer compensation, those two worries kind of go away, according to the NAR. Agents working with a buyer must enter into a written agreement before touring a home. Now, it says here, the practice changes do not require an agency agreement or dictate any type of relationship. What they're saying here is you're, tying, you're, you're signing a touring agreement. That doesn't mean you have what's called an agency agreement where you're locked in. They're going to work with you for several weeks through this contract. It just means here's a touring agreement. Well, what is a touring agreement? I'm going to touch on that in a few moments. It's not what a lot of people think it is. And it's, uh, again, leading people down the wrong path, my friends. Here's the residential listing contract exclusive agency. On it, you agree on the sales price. The sales price is between you and your agent. You, you two determine what the price is worth. The agent does not set the price. I hear that a lot. Well, he told me this was the price. You better dig in, talk to the agent, look at the comps, make that decision together, folks, because all you're doing is trying to figure out the market value, and you're both going to be wrong. You're either going to be too low or too high, or you'll occasionally get it just right, but you both own it, not one person. And then there's the term, how long is the home going to be listed? Now we get down here to compensation. Here's the important thing right here. Really want everybody to understand this. Listing broker compensation is not set by law, nor by any board, association of realtors, 
multiple listing service, or any other manner that has been fully negotiated between listing broker and owner in this agreement. Should the owner choose to offer compensation to a buyer, broker, or tenant broker, the offered amount is also fully negotiable and agreed upon after discussion with the listing broker. I don't think I need to read that again. Commissions are not set by law. They never were. They aren't now. So when you see news reports that say commissions have changed, they do not know what they're talking about. It's never been there. It's always been negotiable. What's happening now is we want more disclosure. We're probably putting forms in front of your face. That, yeah, I already know that. I know, but you got to sign this. And we still have a lead paint based form, right? House is built before 78. We had me sign a form. You know, don't eat the paint. It might have lead in it. We're still doing that. So once a form comes out, it never seems to disappear. Now, down here in the rest of the form, there's a thing here called unrepresented buyer. So let's say a buyer calls your agent and says, hey, I'd like to see the house. I don't have an agent. So that's all right. Come on, take a look at it. You're going to check here that the owner agrees, if you agree, to pay the listing broker additional compensation of either flat fee or percentage price. Here's the percentage. There's the flat fee. I wish I could move this sample thing. If the buyer of the premises is unrepresented by a buyer broker. Now, if somebody comes in or unrepresented and they contact your, your agent, he still has a fiduciary duty towards you, the seller, but he's helping this buyer without fiduciary duty. So buyer, that's kind of your risk there. You get to the inspection period, he's going to go to the seller and go, well, what do you want? They've got a list of repairs here. What do you want fixed? He goes, I only want to fix two of those things. Well, he's not going to go to the buyer and tell the buyer how to negotiate to get all 10 of those things repaired. So he's just going to have to go back and go, um, I have to communicate to you that the seller's only going to repair two. So that component goes away. They don't have a fiduciary duty towards the buyer, along with any other hiccups that come up. Now, it could go smooth could be great but you can agree to a commission that says I'm paying you this fee to sell my house and if you end up representing an unrepresented buyer I will up that fee to X we do that all the time always did we usually lower the fee because it's easier it's more work you're doing two transactions but it's it's easier because you're working with yourself in other words I answer my phone calls um, I'm easier to get a hold of myself. So it's not as it's not as hard. You've still got the heavy lifting with the buyer, don't get me wrong, but the process team seems to go a little bit quicker, and so you give the seller a break on a commission. Now, it also has a segment in here that says buyer broker. Owner authorizes listing broker to communicate an offer of compensation to a prospective buyer broker in the amount of. What's the amount of? Whatever you two agree of, agree with. What do we think we should offer? Do you want to offer? So it's all laid out to you clearly in that form. See all the options that you have as a seller? You've always had. They're cleaning it up a little bit. I hope that helps. Here's one that I think is not being utilized properly by both agents and by both buyers. I alluded to it earlier. Buyer broker agreement to show property. This isn't an agency agreement. We won't go into that today. But this is a buyer broker agreement to show property. So I had somebody reach out to me this weekend. Said they reached a buying agent on a property that they saw online. Went and looked at one house. The second house, the buying agent said, uh, before I can show you uh, this house and any other houses, you have to sign this agreement. It's the new law. And he signed it to expire December 31st. Now, she didn't even know really if she wanted to continue to work with this agent because she doesn't know anything about him. Might be great. She doesn't know. And she didn't feel comfortable signing an agreement. I describe it as going to your first dinner date with an engagement ring. Most people don't want to do that. But on here, buyers pay attention to this. I'm going to show you with my handy-dandy microscope here, magnifying glass, if I can get it to work. I guess it's not going to work. There it is. Term. This agreement shall commence on, let's put it today. You want to look at a house today? I'll put it on there and it's going to expire tonight at midnight. There you go. Problem solved. You decide that. 
the agent doesn't tell you it's a minimum month, it's a minimum six months. You decide that. You know, I like you. I think you're a great agent, you know, but I'm not sure if we're going to continue to look at houses, um, you know, this whole term. But for today, I'm more than willing to commit to you. So I'll sign this agreement for a day or for a weekend. And that's what we do. Now, it also says in here, it gets on the topic of compensation. Broker compensation is not set by law. First time you heard of that? <laughs> Nor by any board association of realtors, multiple listing service in any manner. I am repeating myself. So if the broker represents a buyer on the purchase of a property, as indicated by the purchase contract that was signed prior to the expir expiration date, buyer agrees to compensate the broker as the following in broker compensation. Now, this is going to scare some people, but I'm going to clear it up. You're agreeing either to a percentage of the price or a flat fee or other. Gold, diamonds, doesn't matter. My dad got paid in jewelry once, a bunch of gems. It was weird. Broker compensation shall, shall be due and paid at the time and condition of the close of escrow. Buyer authorizes broker to accept compensation from the seller or seller's broker, which shall be credited against the broker compensation. What did I just say there? You're authorizing your agent to get his commission, or as they're saying in the Facebook groups now, in real estate, bananas, everybody's afraid to use the word commission, to get that from the seller. Because remember, we went back to the listing agreement, and the seller can say, okay, yeah, let's un offer compensation. They can offer it here. Now, we're going to get back to the agreement for the buyer to sell the agent in just a moment. So bear with me. And if you have any questions on this, be sure and shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com or just quite simply give me a call. But let's say that I negotiate a fee on this of 2.5%. I'm going to go out and help you find a house. If I end up representing you in a contract, my fee is 2.5. We're going to make every effort to get this through seller concessions. Um, and you agree to that and you sign here. Now, we look at a home. You decide you want to buy it. Guess what happens? The seller has said, I'm offering 3%. Cool. I still only get 2.5 because that's my agreement. Who gets the 0.5? The buyer does. That's a very attractive offer now. So <laughs> seller's happy, agent's happy, buyer's happy. But what if the buyer says, I want this house. They're not offering compensation. I can't afford, Rick, to pay you 2.5. Um, then we're going to sever the agreement, and you have to go directly to the listing agent as an upper unrepresented buyer. It's totally up to you. These decisions are all made by you. These agreements, while they are getting kind of complicated, it's very good that it's letting you know what the process is. But you only know that if it's explained to you by the agent and if you take the time to read it and understand it. It's just like buying a car. You know the terms. You know the back and forth that you go on. I don't want this insurance. I don't know. I don't need the undercoating. Um, I don't need a trailer hitch. Uh, so buying real estate, you are looking at things that cost you money and you have to make sure that you're checking every box correctly and take your time to read it but please if you get anything out of this video understand that the fees and the compensation and the new bananas are totally up to you you are in complete and total control don't let anybody snowball you into anything now if you have any questions about those types of agreements reach out to me but if you're already under an agreement with an agent understand I have a uh, ethics responsibility that I can't, you know, consult you on that. So please be upfront if you call and say, hey, what about this form? Uh, I had to sign this and I, I can only say, well, you, you can talk to them about whether or not you want to sever it or if it's a listing agreement. I can't talk to you at all about that. So I don't want to get in trouble. And uh, it's not fun getting in trouble. So anyway, I hope you have learned something from this. And, uh, and I hope your biggest takeaway is what you've seen on the news is not true. They just get snippets. They repeat it. They send it out there. And it's just not true. It doesn't mean the industry is bad. It just means they're not taking the time to do their homework. Take care.